in today's video, we're going to talk about and explain as simply as possible how your automotive air conditioning system works, because if you know how it works, you can figure out what's wrong with it more easily when it's not working. So guys, in the past, I've done several videos on repairing air conditioning systems in vehicles, and I will post them up here in the top hand corner. We've replaced components, we've looked at common issues with super air conditioning systems, and we've done charging the system, evacuating the system, etc. But it's dawned on me that I've never really explained to you viewers how the system actually operates. Now, it is imperative that you know how things work to fully understand them. If you don't know the theory, if you don't know the operation behind a particular system, it makes it incredibly hard for you to diagnose when something is wrong with it. If you know how it's supposed to work, you can figure out when you see it's not working, work backwards and figure out what you need to do to correct the situation. So if you don't understand AC systems, it makes it entirely difficult to repair them and work on them. So today we're gonna do the most rudimentary basis explanation of automotive air conditioning systems where hopefully all of you guys at the end of the video will have a good solid foundation and at least the general overview of how the system works. So today's video, we're using my 2013 Subaru Crosstrek as an example. Now it's very easy to demonstrate and show parts of an AC system on a Subaru engine because of their location and how easy they are to access on the engine. Now there are four main parts to the AC system on your vehicle, and that is the compressor, the evaporator, the condenser, and your thermal expansion valve. Now we're gonna start off with our AC compressor, which is the heart of the AC system. Without the compressor, we cannot move refrigerant through the system and we cannot cool the inside of the car. Now on a Subaru vehicle, your AC compressor is right here on the top. It has a pulley on the front and is driven off of the engine. At the front, you have an electromagnetic clutch, which engages or disengages the actual compressing function of the compressor. When the compressor isn't needed, the pulley on the front just freewheels with the serpentine belt. But when you need to activate the compressor, an electromagnetic clutch turns on, like the clutch in your transmission, and locks that pulley drive to your belt, turning the compressor and activating the compression inside of that compressor. So what does the compressor do? It's very simple, it's in the name, it compresses. And what it compresses is gaseous refrigerant. Now, if you know anything about automotive air condition systems, you know there are two sides to the AC system. You have a high side and a low side, and that's talking about your pressures in the system. Now on Subarus, they mark it very clearly. You've got an H for your high side port and an L for your low side port. Also, the size of the hose helps you on that. Larger hoses for the low side, smaller diameter for the high side. So what happens is your gaseous refrigerant enters the compressor. The compressor, there are several different types of compressors, how they actually compress your gas, but it compresses the gas into a high pressurized gas. Now when it does this pressurization, it adds heat to the system. So you've got a hot high pressure gas discharging from your compressor, which comes out in this line right here. Now, if you've ever worked on your vehicle and inadvertently put your hand on this hose, you might have gotten a little burn because these hoses do get rather hot when the air conditioning system is functioning. Your high side hoses and lines are very, very hot to the touch, whereas your low side lines are very chill and cool and sometimes wet with condensation. So that high pressure, high temperature gas comes out of the compressor, it enters this line, and it comes right around to the front of the vehicle into your condenser. Now your condenser sits at the very front of the vehicle, right in front of your radiator. Now I have a condenser right here pulled out of another Subaru so you can easily see it. Now this does look like a small radiator. It's much thinner and smaller in width and height than the traditional radiator you'd find in your vehicle. Now what the condenser does, it's in the name. It 
condenses. What happens is that high pressure, hot refrigerant comes into the condenser, air is pulled through the front of the vehicle by just driving down the road and air going through the grill and also your cooling fans pulling that air through. Now when that air comes through there, it pulls the heat energy out of that high pressure gas. And when it does that, that high pressure gas cools and condensates. That's why this is called a condenser, because it causes condensation. Your gaseous refrigerant condensates down to a liquid. Now on a Subaru, you have a desiccant dryer on your condenser, and that is to capture any minute little bit of water that might be in the system. Now there are two main differences in air conditioned systems. We're talking about Subarus today, which use a thermal expansion valve and a desiccant pack, where some systems use an orifice tube and an accumulator. So for comparison, this is a system that uses an orifice tube and an accumulator rather than a desiccant dryer and a thermal expansion valve. This is your orifice tube and it has this small brass tube in here, which is your metering device. And it's got this mesh filter here. So what happens is the refrigerant comes through here and then it is metered out through the end of the orifice tube and you have the accumulator here once that high pressure comes back out of the evaporator before going back to your compressor. Now I'll show you that really quickly on my Chevrolet truck just as a comparison, but we're not gonna focus on it too much in this video. So we have condensated our hot gas into a liquid. Now where does that liquid go? It flows out of our condenser and it comes around to our thermal expansion valve, which on a Subaru, the majority of Subarus is located right here on the firewall. Now you see we've got a small line and a large line as what we talked about earlier, high pressure, low pressure. So we've got a high pressure liquid here at our thermal expansion valve. Now what the thermal expansion valve does, it's, it's a, basically a metering block. There is a hole, a small orifice in this block that meters the amount of liquid that goes through it. Now, depending on temperature, that orifice can change size to allow more or less refrigerant to flow through it. So this high pressure gas goes through this small orifice and sprays out as a fine mist, as vapor. Once it does, it sprays into the next component, our evaporator core. Now the evaporator core is located inside of your dashboard. Now, I'm sure most of you have figured out what the evaporator does by now based on the name and what we've figured out basically with the rest of the system. The evaporator evaporates that liquid refrigerant. So what happens is the refrigerant has a very low boiling point. When that liquid goes into the evaporator core, the heat energy from inside the car goes around the evaporator core and boils that liquid refrigerant and it turns it back into a gas. Now when it does this, it's pulling the heat energy out of the vehicle into the refrigerant before it exits the car. Now a big misconception about air conditioning systems is people believe that your air conditioning system cools your air. It puts cold air in the car and cold air is what cools it down. That's not exactly how it works. What air conditioning systems are, are a heat pump. They pump heat from inside of the car via the evaporator and dump it outside of the car via the condenser. So you're pulling all that trapped hot air out of the car via the refrigerant and dumping it outside at the condenser. So we've pulled our heat energy out of the car, which cools down that evaporator core. Now your blower motor blows air across that evaporator core because the evaporator core is cool. That air is cooled and you get a chill air out of your vents. So now we've got that vapor, that low pressure gas coming out of our evaporator core. And it comes around this line all the way back around to complete the circuit back into our compressor to be compressed again. And it just continues to flow around this very simple system. So guys, there you go. A very simple, easy to understand explanation of how the AC system operates in your vehicle. Now, we will go more in depth 
into refrigerant types, pressures, the theory behind it. This video was just an introduction of the flow of refrigerant, the components in the system, and how the system theoretically operates. Having that basic knowledge, that foundation, and how the theory of this operates is immense when working on and diagnosing issues. I'm sure a lot of people out there did not understand exactly how AC systems work. They just knew that when it doesn't work, it sucks because it's hot and you want to be cool. So guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something here and got some good knowledge out of the basis of automotive AC systems. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.